Hi, everybody. Hope everybody can hear me. My name is Edward. Uh, I come from Thingamajigs, and this is our first uh, live event. Very excited to, um, to be part of this, and I'm glad you're joining. Um, I'm, come from, uh, I'm from a group called Thingamajigs, and we are a uh, Oakland uh, group, and we like to create music with unusual objects and things we find around our houses and around our whole environment. So we're really looking forward uh, to working with all the students in the Oakland Unified School District. Um, today, we're gonna do, I wanna introduce you to uh, the four of our artists where you guys will be working with and seeing videos. Um, they're all from the Bay Area right here. And uh, we're gonna do, uh, show a couple introduction videos that they made. We're gonna do a couple activities um, from them, and we're also going to do uh, some answer some of your questions. So we have some questions that we already have, and feel free uh, to put questions in the chat after maybe you see their videos. If something comes up, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, just make sure that we every, we have appropriate questions with appropriate languages, please. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, we're going to start with some uh, videos. Our first one is from our artist, Cheryl Leonard. Hi, everyone. My name is Cheryl Leonard. I'm a composer, performer, and instrument builder, and I live in San Francisco. I love wild places and wild sounds, and I like to make music about the natural world and how we humans are a part of nature, not separate from it. I like to play things like sticks, leaves, rocks, feathers, shells, bones, water, and even ice. Sometimes I put these materials together into sculptures that are also musical instruments, like these ones here in my studio. Let's take a quick look. We're zooming in here on the limpet shell spine, which is made from shells from Antarctica, mounted in driftwood. Behind that, a couple of instruments made with penguin leg bones. There's some dried kelp. Here's the baby driftwood pipe organ, the little guy in the front. More penguin bone instruments. And this here is Creature. Creature's made from fossilized cow rib bones in a piece of redwood driftwood. Here's some musical rocks. Up top here is Boa, made with Boa constrictor rib bones. I use different kinds of microphones to help me hear very quiet sounds from the natural objects that I collect and sounds of animals, birds, wind, water, and so forth that I record when I go out exploring in wild places. These are called field recordings. To make music, I mix my favorite instrument sounds with the field recordings. I've traveled as far away as Antarctica to make music, but I also love exploring at home, in my neighborhood, and in parks that are close to my apartment. Next time, I'll show you the different kinds of microphones that I use to make my music. I'll demonstrate some ways to make interesting sounds on found objects, including rocks, leaves, shells, and seaweed. And I'll introduce you to a few of the instruments that I've built out of things I found while exploring. If you take the time to look for it, music is everywhere. All right, that was Cheryl. Uh, she'll be with us too. Um, so next, we're going to be introducing you to our great artist, Zachary James Watkins. Check out his video. My name is Zachary James Watkins. I'm a, um, an artist proudly uh, residing in West Oakland. Um, and I want to say that I'm honored to be a part of this wonderful project and to get a chance to share my art with you. 
I um, find myself uh, concerned with sounds and composing and being a producer and a musician since I was a young person. Um, I've always been very fascinated by the phenomena of listening and sounds and creating sounds um, and receiving sound. Um, from listening to records to hearing my family sing and play instruments to playing my own and exploring my own sound. Uh, so what you'll see is, is my space, how I live as an artist in uh, these times uh, in West Oakland, um, my personal studio space and the type of live music I make and have developed over the years and the, the unique instruments that I've uh, developed and found. Um, how I think about composition and organizing sounds for the ability to experience it, you know, from an audience perspective. Um, so how I, how I organize my sounds and compose and notate. And also the ways that I find myself recording and documenting music and sound. So I'm really interested in the science of sound, the physics of timbre and how vibration and, and our ears work and how music and sounds uh, reverberate in spaces. Um, and I'm also interested in how we organize sounds in community spaces um, to tell stories. So I've pretty strongly found myself um, immersed in this world and the community that we've created together. Um, so I'm very proud to be a part of this and I look forward to getting to know your work and to be a part of this collaboration. So thank you very much, everyone. All right, that was Zachary James. My name is Zachary Watkins. James Watkins. I'm and our next artist, I believe, is Robert Lopez, who's coming from Jack London Square. Check out this video. Robert Lopez and we are here in beautiful Jack London Square steps away from my practice space and rehearsal studio I am a Bay Area based uh, performer composer freelance musician uh, I do tons of different types of music what you just heard right now is a little snippet of a rhythm called Vasi from the Candomblé tradition in Brazil which is like this type of music that I just thought was super super cool um, that I kind of became aware of in about 2008, January of 2008. And since then, you know, this super cool music has become a very strong part of my life. And I have many great friends and teachers and somewhat of a chosen family just because of this beautiful music. So in our video together, we're going to talk a bit about different types of drums, um, different sizes, different drum heads, drum skins how they sound, um, where they come from, and how all these things come together to create a drum and to create wonderful music. And so, yeah, we're gonna go inside my space and I'm gonna show you a few different ways to play them and how these, how these, all these elements interact to create wonderful rhythms and wonderful sounds and how this drum can be like, if you think of a piano with like at least 88 keys, um, it's kind of rare that we think of a drum that way with this diverse array of sounds, but if we play it here, or if we play it here, or if we play it here, or if we use the stick here, or here, or here, or here, we start to add all this whole, this entire spectrum, this entire rainbow of different sounds that can come from just one single drum. It's pretty interesting. So I'm gonna go back to one little rhythm and this is another, another form of the same rhythm that we heard at the beginning of Vasi. A little bit faster, 
a little bit slightly more uh, bombastic, maybe a little more aggressive. So this is Vasi for Ogun. least we have our friend Danny Clay. Um, check out his video. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Danny Clay. I am a composer who puts sounds together to make music of many different kinds. I like to think of my musical projects as little experiments because I'm always asking questions about sound. What would it sound like if I asked the string quartet to play drawings? in as many different places as possible. sound like if you made a musical obstacle course. to make music from two different rooms. What would it sound like if a choir of singers pretended to be my cat? I come back to a lot is this. What are the different ways you can turn a sound into a drawing and a drawing into a sound? There's actually a word for this called notation. Sometimes notation looks like this. Sometimes it looks like this. And it can even look like this. But what all musical notation has in common is that it combines sound and drawings in some way. In our video workshop, we're going to be looking more at notation and how it can be used to organize and inspire new ideas for sound and music. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye. All right, those are our four artists that all you guys at the Oakland Unified School District partnering schools will be working with. We're so excited. Um, and um, we thought we should do uh, a couple activities before we go into uh, bringing in all the artists on the screen and um, asking them questions. Uh, so I think now we are going to do a, uh, a live play along activity with our friend Danny Clay, who I hope you guys will be seeing on screen, which I think you can. Hey, Danny. 
Hey, great to see you all. Um, and thanks so much for joining us in this, in this project together. Um, really excited to share some ideas and I'm excited to like watch all of these videos and learn from all these ama other amazing artists as well. Um, so uh, I think my video was the one you just saw last and uh, I wanted to talk a little more about notation really quickly, um, which is again, this word for drawings that represent sounds. And I wanted to show you a few um, a few things I've been trying and maybe ask for your help. So all you'll need to test this out with me right now is I'm wondering if you can find, take maybe 10 seconds and find a loud sound and a soft sound somewhere in your surroundings. And it could be something you use with your voice or something, uh, something you find, you know, maybe at your desk or where you're sitting right now. Can everyone take 10 seconds and find a loud sound and a soft sound? I'm going to do the same thing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fantastic. And I don't know if, um, I don't know, Miss Alex, can we hear some of the other artists? I see some folks have sounds. Um, let's see. Uh, Robert, can we hear your loud sound and soft sound? Here's my soft sound. Awesome. Here's my loud sound. So cool. Thanks for sharing, Robert. Um, Zachary, did you, I see you have, did you have something nearby? Do you have a loud sound and a soft sound? Oh, it looks like Zachary's got some peppermints. Wow, cool. <laughs> so cool. Thanks, Zachary. Um, Cheryl, do you, I saw you had something too. You have all these cool noisemakers there. I do. I'm in my studio. So my quiet sound is some leaves, some dried oh, leaves amazing. outside. It's pretty quiet. And my loud sound is some rocks. Whoa. Awesome. I love this quartet. Oh, my uh, soft sound is this crocheted pumpkin that my wife made, which might not even make a sound. And then I have this toy from when I was a kid for my loud sound. Um, so this is such a cool little quartet we've got. Um, so here's the experiment. Um, I hope everyone watching has a loud sound and a soft sound too. Um, and this is what we're going to try. We're actually going to try this little musical obstacle course. And if you notice, there's three ingredients in this notation. There's these little dashes, and then there's these circles. And if you notice, some circles have a tiny little bump on the inside, and other circles, like hi the one highlighted red now, has, a, has kind of a big mountain. So you've got like mountains and hills, and then you've got a lot of dashes. What I'm wondering is, uh, if we watch this video and we see a little hill highlight red, can we make our soft sound? And if we see one of those bigger mountain circles highlighted, can we make our loud sound? Um, maybe we can try this all together. Um, all right, I'm gonna do it with my sounds. Um, Miss Alex, would it be crazy if we all unmuted and tried this together? We can try it. All right, let's see what happens. Um, all right, and if you're at home, make sure you're, you, you are also playing along with us. All right, here we go. Awesome. Thank you so much for trying that out with us. Um, I know you could only hear some of our sounds here on the Zoom call, but I, I hope you can imagine just the symphony of loud and soft sounds that everyone was making together. Um, so in my video workshop, we'll explore this idea a little bit more. How can we turn drawings into sound? Thank you.
Awesome. Thanks so much, Zachary. And thanks for all the other artists and Mrs. E for joining in. I hope everybody at home got to try that as well. Um, next, we have uh, something that we can all work with. Um, we're bringing in Robert Lopez, uh, one of our great percussionists who studied percussion from all different countries. Uh, you'll be learning more about that in your uh, the video workshops he's providing. Uh, but for now, let's work on a little uh, uh, game with him. Go ahead, Robert. Okay. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you all. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a drummer, percussionist. I do a bunch of different things, play a bunch of different drums and different types of drums and percussion instruments, whether it be a drum head like this conga or a shaker or anything. It's a, it's a wide variety of things. And a big part of what I do is maintaining a rhythm, maintaining a steady sense of rhythm and expressing myself through that. And so I kind of want to talk a little bit about today about how these things, about how these rhythms can kind of, you can find an underlying thread that connects it all. And that type of beat, pulse, tempo can make you want to move, can make you want to dance, can make you want to walk. Um, and it, it's a very important thing to, that I think a lot of us know, but it's an important thing to explore and to understand uh, better and better every day. So, you know, I know I have a drum here and it's, I can't play too loud here, so, uh, but we all have our, our hands and we can either clap our hands or you can clap, or you can, sorry, you can sing this rhythm back to me with your mouth or you can, you know, play on your, on your legs and just, just, I know we can't hear each other right now, but I trust that you're working on it with me. So what we're gonna do is, I'm going to play a rhythm here on my drum, and I want you to play it back. And so what's going to happen, for example, this first one, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to count it in. So I'll go one, two, three, four. And you go cha, 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 cha. And then I go and cha, 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 right? Cha, cha, cha. Okay, cool. Now, let's do that now and see, are these attacked? Are these hits? Like, let's think about it. Like, are they just, is it da, 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 da? Is it like kind of out of nowhere or is there something underneath that's really bringing it all together? Um, and so let's do that for, we're going to do the same rhythm and a few more, okay? So here we go. Let's start with that same one and then we're going to move on. And if you don't get it the first time, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna play multiple times. Just do your best. Play what you can, and, and let's let's play some music together, okay? So same thing. Here we go. One, two, ready. Here we go. New one. Let's pause right there. So friends, as we're playing this stuff, and you can kind of, I may be giving it away, but I'm like expressing myself and I'm moving to a beat. And so these hits, they're not just out of thin air, there's an underlying pulse that's connecting it all, right? Um, let's do this a couple more times and then I wanna move on to something. Here we go, here we go. One more time, uh, two different rhythms. One, two, three, four. Cha, 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 cha. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going da, 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 da. I'm feeling this beat that's keeping everything together. It's giving us a nice steady pulse. So now real quickly before I go, uh, we all saw the video of me playing a little bit and I want to play some of that stuff briefly, but I wanna show you 
how this idea of a pulse is there. Even when the music gets crazy, that us drummers are really thinking of how it all ties together and this can really make people feel the energy of the music and make people move. You can go, he pull from here, pull from there, pull from there, and still be playing in the rhythm, okay? So in my video, I play this rhythm bossy at the end of the video. And I want you all to follow along and clap. And the main pattern goes like this. Right? So you should be you should be clapping right here. Clap, 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 clap. If I'm playing with my hand or with my stick, I'm still thinking of the beat. It's just expressed in different ways. Clap, clap, clap. Keep going. Clap. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna change the rhythm a little bit. Should be clap, 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 clap. I'm gonna change it again. Okay, thank you all. Thank you so much for joining in. So much fun to work with you all. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thank you. That was awesome, Robert. Thanks so much. Awesome. I hope you guys are feeling energized. Uh, and I hope you're ready to um, ask some great questions for our artists. Um, so uh, Ms. Z and I will be kind of pulling questions. Uh, we have ones that have already been written. We have uh, hopefully some that will be coming up on the chat that our moderators will send to us. So um, Ms. Z, do you want to uh, start with your first question that you have? Sure. I thought um, since we just heard from um, Zachary and Danny, uh, sorry, from Danny and Robert, maybe we'll start with questions for Sh Cheryl and Zachary, if that's okay with everyone. So let me ask one from for both. So um, for Cheryl, um, my question is, this is from Rowan at Thornhill Elementary. He's a fifth grader. My question is for the person who made music with icicles. I want to ask how icicles make sound when you play music with them. Yeah, so great question. Um, each icicle makes its own pitch depending on how big the icicle is. Imagine it's like an icicle xylophone. So the small icicles are very high pitched and a bigger icicle would be low pitched. And so if you find an icicle in your life, um, you can tap it and you can hear it goes ding, ding. It's really fun. But if you hit it too hard, it will break and fall down. And um, I want to ask a follow up question on the same thread. This is from Christopher in third grade. How do you know that the rocks and things that you collect make musical noises? And how do you hear that when you're collecting them? Sometimes it's just that I'm literally just walking on a trail on rocks and I kick a rock and it makes it a cool sound and then I have to pick it up and check it out. Sometimes I don't know in advance that it makes a good sound. I just think it's pretty or interesting and I bring it back to my studio and then I do some kind of mad scientist sound experiments to see what kinds of voices it might have. I'll ask a couple for Zachary that I found. Um, Zachary, uh, this is uh, uh, from Leslie. She's a, uh, from a third grader. How did you come up with the idea to make music with things that are electronic? Everyone and beautiful presentation. Um, yay. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I'm inspired by the work that our collaborators are up to, um, so this is very fun. Um, there's a long story, but I'll, I'll try and be clear. Um, I, I have parents that were artists, and they, when I was a young person, um, I was able to have piano lessons with um, 
this woman named uh, Mary Helen Snow, and I bring her up every time. So this is going into the long answer, but um, she had a piano, but she also had a wall of electronic synthesizers. And so I was maybe your age, um, third grade, second, third grade, and I was introduced to this wonderful artist, Mary Helen Snow, and she noticed that I was really curious about the synthesizers and the recording equipment that she also owned. And for the next 10 years, I would go to her house weekly and study piano and study synthesizers. So she was a big influence on me. Um, but since I've been young, um, I've been curious about how sound um, lives on records and on tapes and in computers and in CDs and and how instruments, um, electronic instruments like synthesizers create tones. So I've I've been very fascinated by the technology of sound since a young person. Um, so as a kid, I would um, play with um, turning on objects and off. So a, 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 even a TV made a sound. Um, and I would play with um, the radio and the turntable. When you play a record, you can stop it. You can slow it down. Um, be careful, you might hurt the record, but um, I was always curious about starting and stopping sounds and exploring the different types of sounds that were um, being generated by my by my world. And um, it's a hard question to answer because I think that we're all very entrenched in um, the modern reality of electricity and we might take it for granted, but for me, um, the idea of transferring energy from one uh, state to another is really quite fascinating. Um, so when we think about the sound of our voices, it's, it's um, analog energy exchange between air and our ear and to turn that rela relationship of vibration into electricity and um, digitizing as well is just really powerful technology and it's exciting so um, I'm still a student myself but I find myself gravitating to understand uh, the the depth of um, new new technologies and new sound uh, opportunities and potential. So I'm just I'm just curious. I would say that that's the answer. I'm curious. Nice, awesome. Uh, Ms. Z, any uh, more questions? Yeah, um, I want to open it up to anybody who um, wants to answer now. Um, so uh, this question is from Rimas in third grade, and she asks, were you born with music? Mm -hmm. Anyone can take that question. What is music? What what is what is music is a question I would like to also add to that, you know. I, I think we were all born with music because music is for me just organized sound and that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh Robert talks about this underlying idea of a pulse, what's driving that rhythm. And I would love to know more as this, as we continue to um, collaborate about that drive. What is the drive? The, so uh, music is really special. 
Yeah, I was just I, I, thinking about Robert's p idea of pulse too, and and I and I think a lot about breathing. You know, um, you know these there are these musical rhythms, these organized sounds and vibrations that are built into our bodies, right? And so I think we're all born with music, <laughs> right? That's a great question. Though. Love it. I have a, a couple of questions here that really uh, that came up. I, was, I think it's directed towards Danny. Um, we have uh, from Elizabeth, a third grader. She um, actually a couple that I'll ask one after the other. Uh, Elizabeth asks, "How did you learn how to write music?" And I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, Ayat, a first grader. Ayat, uh, thank you. Uh, have you used Zoom to make music? Those are great questions, um, Elizabeth and Ayat. Um, uh, so. I, you know, I remember I was really into, uh, I went to a cousin's wedding uh, when I was about five years old and I saw an instrument called a pipe organ for the first time. Um, and a pipe organ, if you haven't seen it, is this gigantic, huge, crazy instrument. It's usually in a church and it makes all kinds of crazy sounds. And hearing that pipe organ got me excited to learn about how music is put together. And um, in the case of a lot of music for this instrument, the pipe organ, it's written down um, using um, a type of notation uh, that a lot of people call Western music notation. So if you've ever played piano before and you've read notes from a page, um, that's what this kind of notation looks like. So um, after seeing this instrument, I got inspired to learn more about how music was written down in that way and write, and write music inspired by it. So I tried writing a piece for pipe organ when I was five. It's never been played, probably sounds really bad, um, but it got me really excited to learn more about that. And now I like to explore different ways of, of using, um, of different ways of writing down uh, sounds. I'm sorry, I, got, I forgot your question because I got really excited about pipe organs. <laughs> can, you, can you ask it again? Uh, so yeah, so how, uh, how did you learn how to write music? And then did you ever, have you ever used Zoom? Oh, great. Yeah. So, and then really, I, I learned how to write music over time just by learning, uh, looking at a lot of different kinds of music and seeing how people, how people used uh, writing down music to capture their ideas. That's how I learned. It took a long time and many years. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm using Zoom now. I'm working with a, with a choir, uh, a, a San Francisco-based choir named Volti, uh, and we're making some music over Zoom. Um, and actually, I'm making music the same way that I made music with you a few minutes ago. I'm playing them videos uh, where different things pop up on the screen and asking them to make sounds in response to it. So I'm trying to use this idea of video that we are all used to nowadays uh, as a way to, to make sounds. Thanks for the questions. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions for Robert. This is from Melissa Beth in second grade and she asks, how long did it take you to learn to play drums? And then a couple of students in, in a couple of my classes asked you, what was your favorite kind of music to play and listen to? Okay, thank you for the questions, everybody. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, so the, the real answer is I'm still learning to play music. I'm still le learning many more rhythms, many more patterns, many more songs. I'm still working on it. Um, I think that I was trying to think about this when I saw your question earlier, and I was thinking kind of, kind of like, it's kind of like if you make, you know, your kid and you can make yourself a sandwich and it's just fine and, and it's, it's good and you put all the things you want in it and that, that kind of changes as you go along, as you're a teenager, as you're an adult, as you're, uh, as you get a little bit older, it's like you start to put different things in it and um, it just develops over time. And it's the same with music. I, I, I feel like I, I, I originally learned from my dad when I was about nine or 10 years old. Um, but even before that, I was always attracted to music. Um, and I know even that had I not met uh, these particular professors that really changed my life and made me study music very seriously, I think no matter what I would have done, I still would have been in, in, uh, in love with making music and listening to music. It would have been a huge part of my life. So um, 
but yeah, I'm I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Uh, I have a, a long way to go. So, uh, and I'm sorry, what was the second question? Uh, what type of music? What type of music do you like to play and listen to? Yeah. Um, well, man, I don't know if we have enough time for that to, to finish to fully answer that. Um, I like a lot of different things. Um, I like a lot of uh, hip hop music. I like the Roots. I like the MC Odyssey. I like. Kendrick Lamar and um, uh, Anderson Park. I like a bunch of different things. I love like the type of music I play for you all, the Candomblé music. Uh, I think it's such beautiful songs and rhythms. Um, I love other Brazilian samba. I can go on and on, but those are some examples for right now. It's all really inspiring to me. Thank you. All right, we have, um, I think we're going to maybe do uh, just a couple more questions because we're uh, almost out of time. I think this one is open to anyone. Uh, this is from a student named Ocean. Um, and it says, she uh, says, what inspired you to start to make music and explore the world? What inspired you, all of you to start to make music and explore the world? If anybody wants to try it, take that one on. I don't remember a time when I wasn't doing those two things. Even when I was very little, I liked to go outside and explore in my yard, wherever, wherever I could go. Um, and I think music has just been a part of my life since I was very small as well. Ask yourselves what your favorite sound is, um, what or or maybe uh, a strong memory of a sound. And when I ask myself that, it'll be the sound of my my um, family. It'll be the sound of um, nature, and specifically thunderstorms. But one of mine is a uh, favorite of mine is um, the sound of cicadas. The the insect that would create these really beautiful dense waves of sound in the Texas summer that would um, exist for the whole day uh, for, for weeks at a time and just being immersed in that vibration um, so thinking about your own experiences with with your listening um, is really exciting to me personally. <laughs> All right, we have one last question. This is also open to everybody. Uh, this is from Marbella, a third grader. And uh, it says, how can I make music in my kitchen so that it's not so boring when I wash my dishes? Awesome question. Come on, you dishwashers. Somebody must have an idea for that. I would see how many different kinds of sounds I could make with the water. Nice. Every plate is like a different note. Every plate, every bowl, every glass. That, that's where my head goes. Robert, Zachary, any thoughts? Yes, you can scrub your dish with different types of materials. <laughs> and, come on, Robert. Yeah, so there's one thing that comes to mind. And, um, you know, I, I guess uh, sometimes my attention kind of drifts off and where I, I either or washing dishes or I'm putting things away. Uh, as you'll see in my video, there's this instrument called a cuica. That's, uh, it's this Brazilian drum and it has like a stick that goes it has down the inside of the middle of the drum. And it has this, you, uh, there's like a cloth that goes across the stick and it creates this like friction, crazy like monkey screaming sound. And sometimes I, I'm able to find that when I uh, am drying and putting away my food processor and it just really cracks me up. It's just like, I don't know. I get so bored and I get so, you know, overwhelmed with things. But sometimes when I find those little moments of like, 
uh, creating these sounds by accident or for fun, it just makes me so happy. So being really creative, you know, different size pots, different size plates, different size materials, they're all gonna create different things or not. And that's the adventure. Awesome, yeah. Everywhere is music, music makes us happy. And so let's see, we can use music and sound every, everything you do, including washing the, the dishes. Um, all right, everybody, I um, appreciate uh, everybody coming together, all the students that are watching and joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I wanna thank Cheryl, Robert, Danny, and Zachary. I wanna thank Mrs. Z for help uh, putting this all together as well. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed the videos that are be coming up. We've been working really hard on them. Uh, we hope you like them. And we'll look forward to our next um, uh, online event. Hopefully we can have one at the very end of our project. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to say thank you so much again to Thingamajigs and all four of the musicians who uh, joined us today. And I want to acknowledge that there are many more questions that have not been able to be answered yet. Um, and so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, that is something that you can kind of work on with your teachers and, and be asking each other these questions as you're exploring how you make music um, and your own sounds. So um, thank you again so much. And for all the students um, and teachers, there will be some videos coming very soon with all four of these wonderful uh, teaching artists that have joined us here today. All right.